Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. How is everyone doing? I hope everyone is doing his and her best to weather the pandemic. My name is Azian from Ipoh Perak. My presentation today will be Perak, the ecotourism heaven of Malaysia. I'm sure everyone misses traveling, be it going for camping, picnics, going to the rivers, beaches, mountains, and others. I know, I know, everyone is putting off their travel plans. But that being said, Pera not only accessible and affordable, it is also attractive and uh, a preferred destination for repeat and new tourists alike. Therefore, uh, today's presentation will go over the details of how Pera is actually pushing ecotourism to become the ecotourism heaven of Malaysia. Being in the middle of Kang Valley and Penang, Pera enjoys first the transportation network efficiency and accessibility specifically the long stretch of highways railways and the rivers next my presentation today will be based on the strengths in positioning para in ecotourism Yes, I'm proud to say that Pera is the ecotourism haven of Malaysia. Yes, together we are reviving the domestic tourism industry. We shall come back stronger, inshallah. For the last five years, Pera has been the top state for day trippers and overnight travelers. I'll go over the objectives and the desired ultimate outcomes. Next. I will delve into specific ecotourism activities, points of interest, or destinations. I will also allow everyone to learn about some issues and challenges in ecotourism. Lastly, I shall recap and recommend some way forward in hoping to shed some light to revitalize tourism industry post COVID-19, in particular tourism sector. Next. You may ask, why ecotourism? Pera is known for its beautiful nature, their sceneries and landscapes. Similarly, the rich heritage and diverse cultures. Really a perfect setting and exciting to adventure junkie and nature enthusiasts. Besides that, it is also a perfect state to visit to indulge in tasty food, learn about Malaysia's sultanate sovereignty which began in 1528 and discover places of interest for family fun. Above all, these travellers will engage with the locals and start appreciating nature, hence ecotourism. This sector is sought after and chosen as the new trending post-pandemic. We are focusing on three objectives, which are safety, sustainability, and inclusivity. These aspects enable state growth, livelihoods, and of course, the industry itself. Firstly, it is clear that tourism touches so many lives, regretfully, most businesses suffer at the moment. However, the nature, in a way, is grateful for the reduced mass going to ecotourism sites. A blessing in disguise, they say. We have um, waters um, are crystal clear, sandy beaches become whiter, and hiking or trekking trails look so much better, being untouched for some time. Secondly, the needs and requirements of doing businesses and traveling preferences differ from pre COVID 19. What used to be most popular destinations and activities may shift in nature and direction. Thirdly, we seek improvements in the state's ecotourism primarily in safety aspects. We also need to improve local authorities' delivery services. By that, 
digitalization plays an important role, including enhanced interagency collaboration, tourism operator skills, and to leverage on databases. The purpose? Reviving the tourism industry is our priority. Next, the requirements in traveling have changed. No more selecting crowded places and the new market segments emerge. Can you guess? Yes. Middle class or the B40s and there are the new young and millennial. We also see the trends where people have been unable to attend family gatherings and social functions. They now prefer to travel with families pretty much to catch up of uh, what they have been missing since March 2020. So business owners and tourism destinations must fulfill those expectations. For example, how do we treat grandparents and the youth? I would say with affordable packages with appropriate services and facilities. What is the most significant improvement and serve as the game changer in Vera? Safety is in everyone's mind, right? This definitely has to be addressed accordingly and with utmost focus. Next. As we know, the government attempts to ensure everyone's their rights to shelter, food, clothing and even education. When we zoom in, the entire processes involve values. We cannot deny the fact that um, government delivers beyond monetary and short-term gains. For instance, Rancangan Malaysia or the five-year plan is to ensure the spillover in so many areas. From planning to implementation, and moving towards review and monitoring, the state works like a machinery. Its effectiveness and efficiency may be questionable at times, but there is no doubt that the government brings forth the best of its people, regardless of geography, time period, and social status. Perak Sejahtera 2030 is the new development a blueprint for the state of Perak. Series of engagements facilitated by the state think tank Institute Dora Rizwan has brought together a solid foundation for the future. Let me go over quickly with regards to the transformation in Perak. The initiative replaces 2009 Perak Amanjaya, which drives alleviation of poverty. In return to generate three Qs, namely quality opportunity, quality income, and quality living. Prior to that, Perak Maju 2015 was the interagency approach between the State Economic Planning Unit and Plan Malaysia to catalyze the growth of the state. Hence, we need to see how ecotourism may tap its fullest potential. This is where we put into practice what we preach, think and act tourism. The value chain needs to be rectified and improved towards inclusivity and sustainability. Next. Let me pause for a while. Where are we heading? In all honesty, the whole world aims towards sustainable tourism. Our main focus will be around space, safety, and services. When describing about space based on Tourism Malaysia's survey conducted uh, last year in 2020, the new normal travellers will be attracted to beaches, mountains, and reluctant to go to crowd places like the theme parks and the shopping malls. We have also seen the trend whereby people prefer online shopping and choosing OTAs. With the conventional travel and tours companies and non-technology inclined tourist guides, they may not last in business uh, in 
COVID, uh, in post COVID. If I may share people's perceptions and skepticisms, they would like to travel in their family units or amongst their BSFs or closest friends. They also are quite prepared for each trip. By that, I mean they would research the place, uh, they would check the reviews, they'll easily pass some comments um, on Facebook, the social media, and so on. On contrary, uh, tourist destinations or tourism product owners may as well leverage on this free online positive feedback based on their customers' uh, traveling experiences, their likings, their suggestions, and so forth. Besides uh, space and safety, nothing beats warm hospitality and golden uh, customer service. We may have language barriers uh, in some cases here and there, but warm gesture and beautiful smiles go a long way. For ecotourism sector, particularly adventure-based, safety gears, whole experience at the destination, uh, plus the recreational uh, instructor skills are deemed important. Next. Let's watch the first video. Here goes Pera River Vibes for Therapting. <laughs> Uh, do you know or ever wondered why it's called white water rafting? Back to my question. In hoping that you have watched the video, uh, perhaps you can see the water speed, um, the splashes, uh, the rapids going down, uh, you know, uh, going back, um, back and forth. Sometimes you go to the um, uh, it's real, a very emotional chaos, I would say. Um, well, a clue then. WWR101 
calm water looks like. Well, um, in the next uh, video, um, we shall see um, besides whitewater rafting, where people have chosen to uh, go to uh, Gopeng, Mualim or Selama as have been shown in the previous video. Uh, people also would love to go and see pink dolphins. I repeat, pink dolphins in Thera. Okay, mark your um, calendar as well as your map. Point to Kuala Sepetang, Taiping. Okay, do you love the pink dolphins? Some of the uh, species found in uh, Taipei, Kuala Sepetang uh, are called the Irawadi. So, uh, I'm sure that by now you have some ideas of your future travel plans. Uh, besides seeing the uh, going for a boat ride, um, going to see the uh, dolphins, uh, there are more exciting uh, places. Uh, by that, I mean going for a river cruise. For instance, uh, the top three places uh, for river cruise in Perak would be Teluk Intan, where you can witness the egrets islands and experience firsthand seeing fireflies cruising along the river. Uh, Kuala Sepetang, uh, besides the pink dolphins, you can also um, going uh, for tree planting at the mangroves as well as uh, seeing uh, the fireflies at Kampung View. Uh, in addition, if you are very much uh, keen to see uh, the wildlife, you may also choose to visit to Royal Belum. Have you ever been to any of these sites? Or, eco uh, or have done any tourism, uh, eco tourism activities in Perak. You may also uh, book yourself to any of the river cruise packages, and I'm pretty sure that you won't regret the decision. It will be great for experiential learning and to teach the youngsters or the young tourists about flora and fauna, leave no trace, or bring home your trash. For example, last year, uh, we kicked off one project in uh, Teluk Batik, Manjong, along the beach, that is, uh, at the campus site where people are given uh, trash bags for them to actually be responsible and bring home their trash rather than, you know, uh, spilling it all over the beaches where everyone would like to enjoy the scenery and actually go out and enjoy nature. Uh, next, um, I will be uh, sharing a video on TT5 Maze Park and that will be the final video. Let's travel to Tanjung Pualang, Batu Gajah. This was once a thin hustling town in Perak with South Korean uh, maze design and state GLC um, joint venture that is uh, Menteri Besar Incorporated. A love shape, a park is now open to the public. 
on the very side of the only remaining tin dredge in the state now. Uh, TT5 Pera is known as the heritage site within the uh, Kinta Valley National Geo Park and located only 40 minute drive from Ipoh and about a two hour train ride from Kuala Lumpur. Tin steered Tanah Melayu's economy at the turn of the 20th century. During the peak, Tin Rich Pera emerged as the wealthiest state in Tanah Melayu's history. Ipoh was once called the City of Millionaires. However, a combination of factors eventually led to its downfall. Through perseverance and vision, and being believed that TG5 is an important key component of Para history. With creativity and determination, we have transformed TT5 from Wasteland to Wonderland. The biggest and first hardship Miss Park in Malaysia. Excitement and wondrous experience await you. Come experience Tanjung Tualang TT5 with us now. Welcome back. We just arrived from Tanjung Tualang Batu Gajah. Okay, besides TT5 Maze Park, you may as well enjoy other ecotourism sites and activities in the entire Pera. For example, um, people would go for centuries, uh, be it uh, ikan kela or turtles, terpins, we have those in Perak. How about zoo? We have petting zoos in several places, uh, be it in uh, Gunung Lang, Ipoh, as well as um, in Eco Park, uh, Cengkere Eco Park in uh, Batu Gajah and people prefer going to a zoo typing and night safari in addition if you, uh, you if you want to see herbs tropical rainforest uh, you may also uh, choose to travel to royal balloon um, in addition uh, some nature enthusiasts would love to see uh, blue tears and uh, the perfect spot uh, for it is in Pulau Sembilan. Cave, caving, caving activities, uh, some in Ipoh, uh, Gua Tempurong, as well as in Lenggong. If you are nature lovers who love to take selfies or doing abseiling, you may as well go uh, to see the beautiful waterfalls in Selama and in uh, Tapak. Let me reiterate. Pera is indeed the ecotourism haven of Malaysia. With minimal fees, we may enjoy uh, both natural ecotourism uh, sites and man-made improved destinations. Do you know that there's no entrance fee when you visit Tuntong or Terpins and Turtles in Sedari? How exciting! Uh, by the way, uh, another turtle center is in Pangko. Uh, it's in Pangko Island, also a duty-free island. Yes, think turtles, visit soon, and hashtag travel peratla. Okay, we are going into a more serious tone of the presentation uh, where I will go over the issues and the challenges. Uh, there are four uh, factors that we are going to discuss. Firstly is the budgetary, secondly is the land matters, human capital, and lastly on the technology. Although Perak is blessed with wonderful natural settings, uh, be it rapids, hot springs, rivers, and many more, ecotourism sector faces issues and challenges. No surprise. Um, budget usually tops the chart. Most ecotourism sites are funded by the governments, but in some cases by the operators, NGOs, and communities. An example, Taman Eco Rimba 
Kailang Sayong in Ipo o Lata Istana in Tapah is under the Forestry Department and the wet water rafting activities are offered by a number of small companies as in the case of Gokbeng and Mu'alim in Perak. Land matters are most probably uh, time-consuming and serious. Long battles of land ownership and management plans involving protective areas, buffer zones and future development become a complex problem. Next, we, can, uh, we cannot deny the fact that people are the assets for business growth and the state to strive managing the ecotourism destinations and products. As we are now living on the verge of Industrial Revolution 4.0, ecotourism business owners and operators may not solely rely on policy makers alone and the government for promotional activities, safeguard ecotourism sites and so on. They need to decisively take the matters at hand to embrace technology and by the way, not all solutions are capital intensive. It is our responsibility to manage environmental issues and by this I mean to include the latest uh, or the most suitable technology for rehabilitation and adding value to the land. Obviously, um, this will also benefit and impact ecotourism in the long run. Okay, next, we are going to see the timeline. Um, I'll try to narrow into a small uh, time period that is from 2016 to 2030. Fast forward to 2030, if I may. Uh, at a glance, the timeline shows the evolution of ecotourism in the state. Ecotourism, by the way, has begun many years ago in Perak. Many have visited Royal Balong, uh, Royal Balong State Park, and other wonderful des destinations and experience a uh, wonderful uh, ecotourism activity in themselves. Uh, with um, the 19 geo sites in the Kinta Valley National Geo Park, that will tremendously uh, benefit state and Malaysia. Ecotourism, geotourism, and archaeotourism depend on the communities to strive and keep going as so does the support of the government and private sector. And we are eagerly waiting the countdown of the reopening of tourism sector. By the way, local parakians who are fully vaccinated are allowed to go camping and having a picnic. That's a good news, really. Ultimately, Perak preserves the nature but at the same time pushes towards sustainability and inclusivity. And surely it will be a multi-pronged and to withstand the obstacles for the year 2030 and beyond. For instance, education, investment research, community development and various relevant areas. Internationally, founded by the United Nations, in 2015, all the 70 global goals aim to be a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. And this definitely resonates uh, with the noble cause for the uh, deserving and most loved um, uh, sector which is ecotourism. Uh, eco and as Pera is paving the way of simply embarking the mission to become the eco-tourism haven of Malaysia. Okay, next, uh, we shall move to recommendations, uh, some of the way forward, if I may do so. Um, moving forward, to sustain eco-tourism, we, uh, we shall look into uh, three Ps and two Cs, um, which are policies, promotions, and performances capacity building, and lastly, conservation. These factors will benefit the industry, local authority, tourism players, and travelers too, who are mostly uh, nature lovers or adrenaline rush uh, adventure group. Uh, with policies, everyone wants to be able to enjoy nature. Moreover, SMEs or business owners and recreational or tourism operators may need to change 
uh, we may need a chance eh, rather uh, to operate legally and financially sufficient. They will adopt best practices in ensuring client safety. In addition, they are willing to invest accordingly, in particular um, accommodation, equipment and the hiring of staff. Uh, the third point that I'd like to emphasize is the pandemic has uh, taught us in hosp hospitality industry uh, to move beyond traditional marketing strategies. Uh, therefore, businesses are already all going digital. Bookings and info search on social media like TikTok, IGTV, YouTube, Virtual Expo, Live Tours, or even Facebook Live. Um, online payments also, uh, these and others are adapting well to the uh, new normal. Uh, we are indeed glad businesses sustain, prosper, and start monetizing uh, these um, or any digital platform. Hence, digital transformation will prevail post-pandemic uh, COVID-19. Um, to make sure performances, productivity, and triple bottom line covering people, planet, and profit, or we can sum up as prosperity, are the crucial determining factors. Obviously, the state government is doing its best to ensure high impact investments and ROIs for years to come. Uh, one of the uh, points I would like to uh, go over is the future is here. They say the business is at the speed of thought so that we have the competitive edge. However, Tibet uh, complements actually tacit knowledge in order for Malaysia to grow and become an advanced nation. There are a total of 1,295 Tibet institutions in Malaysia today and offered by the federal government, respective states, and the private sector. Specifically, uh, the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Cultures, or MOTEC, is responsible for Aswara and Institute Craft Negara. This initiative uh, will certainly enhance tourism offering, for instance, to package with ecotourism activities and family targeted traveling experiences. Last, the National Ecotourism Plan highlights four clusters in Perak which are centered around uh, popular ecotourism uh, sites like uh, Gopeng, Taiping, Royal Belom, and Segari Malintang. The surroundings um, conservation concert efforts will not only benefit um, the communities at present, uh, but also to be appreciated uh, by future generations. All right, mm. we are uh, coming to the end of the presentation. Um, I would like uh, to end my presentation titled Para, the Ecotourism Haven of Malaysia. I hope uh, this sharing today may benefit all of us in some ways. Um, more importantly, to think uh, critically yet innovatively. Um, moreover, to conserve ecotourism sites, um, ecotourism areas, um, rather, yet uh, to bring vibrancy and steady economy. Simultaneously, I may um, have stirred um, the imagination and filled the heart for us to join hands um, to bring ecotourism to the next level. Thank you for your time and attention. Uh, with that, let me express uh, my gratitude and extend um, an invitation to all of you uh, to have Perak's ecotourism wish list. So much so, um, the entire destination itself is meant uh, to be shared uh, with all Malaysians and global citizens. Uh, welcome to Perak. Hashtag Travel Perak lah. Thank you.